this is, I think, one of the best displays for us of Jesus showing us who God is. A tale of two parades. Showing us who God is, what God is all about, and what God wants in relationship to us. If you can imagine the scene, Jesus is approaching from the east, from Nazareth, with his sort of peasant band of followers. Meanwhile, there's another parade, a procession coming in from the west, and it's Pilate, representing Rome and all its power. Pilate is coming because it's the week of Passover. Passover celebrates when the Jews had overthrown another imperial empire, Egypt. And Jerusalem was kind of a dangerous place. It was full of uh, radicals and, and violence could happen, and so Pilate was coming in with his procession. Meanwhile, Jesus is coming from the opposite direction with the kingdom of God ushering in from the east. Can I get one more? Hey, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to tell you this and how I wanted to, to do this. We think about Pilate and Rome. We think about imperial power. Pilate is coming in with war horses, chariots. He's coming in from Caesarea Maritima, which is a cosmopolitan city down on the coast. Jerusalem's hot, it's dusty, it's violent. Caesarea Maritima, you get the nice afternoon sea breezes, you get some good fresh seafood. And so he's coming in for, for uh, the Passover, but he's coming in from a kind of a nice place. Can I get one more? And the Roman soldiers are coming in to fortify the garrison at the fortress Antonia. Can I get one more? So if you look at this, this is the fortress Antonia. And this down here is the temple. This is the temple courts. The Romans have a pretty good perch militarily, don't they, over the temple. They have a pretty good view. You can imagine what it must have been like to be a Jew in Jerusalem as this procession of pilots came in. I think about the dust being kicked up, the sound of war horses and leather cinching. There's metal swords clanging. It's pretty intimidating, I would think. This is Rome and all its power coming to say, we are in charge. Can I get one more? Okay. It was also a theological statement, too. Caesar Augustus, who was just before the emperor Tiberius, claimed to be a god. The son of Apollo, see if this sounds familiar, he was praised as the son of God, the prince of peace, lord, and savior. This parade is coming in saying, our God is Caesar. Jesus is, is coming in the opposite direction. Can I get one more? This is by a guy named French painter named James Tissot from the late 19th century. If you think about it, this is almost kind of a joke, isn't it? But it's not a joke. It's Jesus poking the Roman Empire deliberately. But he's coming in on a donkey. The foal of a colt. This is Jesus saying God's power and the kingdom of God is nothing like our concept of power. Can I get one more cake? It's also to fulfill this from Zechariah. Your king comes to you victorious but riding on a donkey. I imagine Jesus' feet almost touching the ground as he's riding this little donkey and juxtapose that to Pilate riding in on a magnificent steed. This is what Jesus is telling us about who God is, this upside-down kingdom of who God is. Can I get one more? What do you think of the flapping doves? I thought I'd try a gif here this morning. <laughs> We have the power of Rome versus, my next slide, this donkey. 
this donkey riding God, if you will. This is the good news, I think, for us. And I'll close up here in a minute. Can I get one more, Katie? We're still obsessed with this because human beings haven't changed in 2,000 years, haven't changed in 40, 50,000 years, probably, from the time we were hunter gatherers until now. We're still impressed by powerful displays. Here's the royal family. I occasionally pick on the royal family, not pick on them, but I, I'm interested in them. Not because I love to follow all the richness and the pageantry or whatever. But I just think how interesting a family system to be born into. How incredible that must be. How incredibly awful, actually, it must be. Can I get one more? This was apparently someone's birthday. Quite a birthday party. We're still impressed with this kind of thing, this kind of power, this kind of majesty. Can I get one more? We do it ourselves here in the United States. This is the inauguration of George W. Bush. Think about this versus riding on a colt or, or, or a donkey. This is that upside down kingdom of God that's still hard for us to, still hard for us to grasp, isn't it? Can I get one more? It's a good thing, but it's one thing I was taught in seminary. There's a good way to be replaced as your pastor. Criticize capitalism or the military. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. I served 27 <laughs> years in the military, and I actually think capitalism is the best system in riding its risen people out of poverty. So please don't think I'm criticizing the military. But you know, this powerful, mighty flyover over Washington, D.C. is something that we still sort of gets our blood going a little bit, doesn't it? Hey, one more hey. When power is used, earthly power, I, I guess it's as I start to get older and I go through a little bit more of my life and I think about other people as we get older and how do we look at the world, it surprises me that people, Putin, I think, is, is he 69 or 70? And... It's usually men who haven't resolved their ego problems who are slaughtering people over an imaginary line on a map that means absolutely nothing. And it continues to this day. I saw the Megan one more, I saw this, just the tragedy of how so many of us still conceive of power and the way that this is different from the power that Jesus talks about, the power of God. Can I get one more, Kate? I think this, this for me is what on this Palm Sunday Jesus is saying. Or Jesus is saying and Jesus is doing. The kind of power and violence that we so often associate with real power can never inspire true love. It can only inspire fear, Intimidation, it can inspire loyalty, it can inspire devotion, but it's not a true love like the relationship that God wants with us. It's Jesus' willingness to show vulnerability and weakness that is the amazing thing about our God. Everybody's seen Superman, right? Nope. I think about Superman sometimes in this context just a little bit. Superman gave up everything for Lois Lane, right? And I remember that thing where he goes into this kind of a clear phone booth looking thing. And I think about Superman giving that up. And then you think about the God of the universe willing to go to a, a death on a cross to show how much he loved us and how much he was willing to undergo to prove that he was safe, she was safe. Is this vulnerability? Can I get my last slide? I love this depiction of Jesus. <clears throat> this is the upside down kingdom. And when we start to look at our relationship to God through this lens, then we can start to look at each other 
and realize that all these trappings and all these things ultimately are completely meaningless. And what matters is we're all equally children of God and of a God who is safe and woos us and never overpowers us. This is what the, Paul talks about as the folly of the cross. And we are the ones who understand it and we're the ones entrusted with that secret to share that with other people. Amen.